We have made it to day 75. What is going on, fan clan? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Fanny Dantump, also known as Danny Phantom. We have been, uh, we've put out 75 straight days of content, whether it be uh, a short or uh, a long form video or just a live. We have been on YouTube 75 straight days creating content. I'm very confident that we'll get to 100 days. I am having a an absolute blast uh, talking with you guys, reading comments. So thank you so much for all the comments. Uh, all the new subscribers, all the likes, everything, it's a blast. I am very confident we'll get to 100 days. I don't know if we'll get to 365. I'm not going to lie, it's a grind. Like, it is a lot of fun, but at the same time, uh, it's a lot. Like, it is a lot. I don't know how people do it. People are way better than me at life. Like, just life in general. Uh, but we're going to have a lot of fun today. We're going to talk about the best-selling Pokemon cards right now. Uh, because we've got Temporal Forces arriving later. Uh, so I'll be packing up all the pre-orders this weekend. Getting out uh, getting out all the pre-orders. Uh, so that way they arrive by release day. And then it's going to be nothing but starting tomorrow like a week straight of temporal forces content we're gonna do a little bit of opening we're gonna go over pull rates we're gonna do master set uh we're gonna give away the master set to one lucky subscriber so make sure you're subscribed to the channel that that video should come out next week um we are going to it's going to be a, we're gonna do pull rates like it's going to be a lot of fun i'm really excited about it i was more excited this morning when i woke up and saw that holy bucket of a leak uh hisui and Growlithe. and i don't want to spoil anything so i'm not going to pop it up anywhere you can look it up yourself but crimson Hayes, I'm already, like, Temporal Forces, I'm really excited about, but uh, when they dropped that Hisui and Growlithe illustration rare, uh, my heart just... It melted. It is such a cute card. Oh my goodness, it's so great! Uh, and some of the other illustration rares as well, that kind of leaked out. Like It looks absolutely stunning. I'm going to stop rambling. Uh, you can go look at those if you want, uh, but we're going to get into the actual video. This is TCGPlayer.com. I am not sponsored or affiliated with TCG Player uh, in any way, shape, or form, but I use their website all the time. <laughs> like, I just use it. It's great, uh, not only for buying and selling cards, but also for data. Like, there is a lot of really good data because this is where the market is. This is how the market performs. There's a lot of stuff that you can find uh, on eBay, a lot of valuable information on eBay, but uh, TCG Player really breaks it all down for you and is really a better source, I think, when it comes to modern cards, vintage Pokemon, uh, vintage cards, older cards, like that, that definitely eBay is your best marketplace for that, understanding the market and getting uh, good information, especially when it comes to uh, Japanese cards, foreign cards, grading cards, things like that. But as far as modern singles go and staples in the community, it is uh, TCG Player is like the, the bee's knees. Uh, if if you go to tcgplayer.com you can kind of do this on your own if you want to i just wanted to kind of give a little brief tutorial i guess i have no idea why uh but if you just click uh advanced and then you just click search this is going to give you uh, every single Pokemon item that's in existence. Right now, it just has it uh, filtered by best match. So if we click on best selling, uh, this will show you the best selling current Pokemon items. Now, it breaks it down uh, to basically everything. So you kind of have additional filters on the side over here. If we just click cards, uh, this will show us the best selling Pokemon cards, not, not including the sealed items and things like that. Uh, so then I just kind of look and I look at basically just the modern. There's a lot of vintage on here. Vintage really started blowing up. This used to only be filled with modern cards, modern staples, and things like that. And then when the pandemic happened and a lot of attention started getting paid to uh, vintage, a lot of vintage started taking over page one. Now it's kind of a, a smattering of both. It's kind of a smattering of both modern and vintage. I really like looking at this multiple times a week. So I'll look at it a couple times a week and I'll filter it in additional ways. So I like going and looking at common and uncommon, uh, but I like looking at energy items, stadium supporter, and tool and leaving out uh, leaving out Pokemon in general. And then I'll look at the best selling because this will tell me a lot of bulk card information. I can see how Switch card is performing. I can see Jet Energy. Look at that. Continuing to climb. It's up to $3.30. Earth and Vessel, which was down to about 40, 50 cents after Paradox Rift opened uh, or came out. Now it's up to about 94 cents. You've got Battle VIP pass in here really starting to fall off now that rotation is about to hit. Uh, Superior Energy Retrieval. That one's up to almost a dollar right now. You've got a bunch of GLC staples in here. Uh, Arvin continues to climb because of how it's performing in the format. You have uh, more GLC stuff with Chorus over here. There's Heart Gold Souls. It's just, it is chocked full of a lot of good information. Uh, and it, like, it really gives you an idea of where the market is headed. So this is stuff that you can kind of look at on your own. I have everything labeled and, and uh, laid out right here in this lovely slide presentation. Uh, 
uh, with some nice coloring in the background. Um, it, it just makes it a little bit easier for us to focus on specific cards. So uh, I pulled all this information a couple days ago. Some of it may have changed a little bit, but probably not much. And a few of these cards are obviously going to be made up of Paldean Fates because Paldean Fates is the most recent set. A lot of people are still having fun opening Paldean Fates. Temporal Forces, even though people are opening that set because it hasn't officially released yet, but pre-releases have already happened. So we're starting to get a good gauge on what pricing looks like. I do not see a $100 card in Temporal Forces, at least not as of yet. So uh, like Walking Wake and things like that, everything seems to be below $100. We talked about uh, the, the Ace Specs, the new Ace Specs that they're putting out. We talked about that in a short last week. It looks like that's going to be about two per booster box, one out of every 18 packs. So don't play, pay ridiculous pricing on those. Uh, you should see like even the most expensive ones settle right around five, six, seven dollars maybe a little bit more uh, for something like Master Ball or if they come out with a computer search down the road or whatever the case may be. There might be some that are a little bit more expensive like what we've seen from Radiant Greninja. Uh, with only seven A specs, it seems like they're going to be relatively inexpensive because pull rates are fairly good on those. Uh, but Temporal Forces doesn't come out until next week. So a lot of a lot of Paldean Fates, a lot of 151, a lot of more recent modern sets, and then a few other outliers as well, which we'll talk about. But here's the Charizard EX from Paldean Fates. This one's actually performing fairly well over the past week. You can see it's staying pretty true to about the same performance as the Scarlet and Violet 151 Charizard EX Special Illustration. Where this one started out really high. Started out about $200, right around release of Paldean Fates, $200.45. That's its high point, uh, and it's, it's it really crashed all the way down to about 109.46. But now, now that we have seen Paldean Fates come out, uh, it, every single wave of products is already released. I don't think that they're really going to focus on any reprints or anything like that for Paldean Fates because it's still readily available well under MSRP. You can still find it all over the place. Uh, but special illustrations, uh, a little bit harder of a pull, right? You're looking at about a booster box worth of packs in order to pull one of them. So Charizard EX with six or seven of them in there means you're opening about a case. Obviously, being a specialty set, packs are going to be a little bit more expensive even if you go the booster bundle bundle route and you're able to find them for about four dollars and fifty cents that's still a little bit more expensive than what you can buy like <laughs> Paldea evolved and obsidian flames because they continue to sell right around that three dollar mark very very cheap uh this one did fall to 109.46 but it's leveled out a little bit it's actually almost climbed up about 10 percent over the last few weeks so it's sitting at 118.69 currently i do think it'll come back down a little bit more as more and more product gets opened i also think now that temporal forces is releasing people are going to lose a a little bit of attention and insight on something like Paldean Fates. They're going to focus more on opening up the new set, which is going to be Temporal Forces, and you might see pack prices drop even further on a set like Paldean Fates, making more and more product get opened up. Here's the Moonbreon. This card has been doing absolutely nuts over the last few weeks. Like, it's been, it, like, I'll, we talked about this yesterday. Sword and Shield products in general, really, really strong, really strong generation, really strong performance, especially from those trainer gallery sets. Booster boxes uh, from all of these sets are selling like crazy on TCG player on eBay, even in different areas of the marketplace, they're doing extremely well. Uh, and even singles, some of these singles are really starting to gain some ground. You can see this Umbreon VMAX, for example. This card dropped below $500. People thought, well, maybe this will go down to about $450 and then I'll pull the trigger. And now it continues to climb where it's sitting just below $600 at $599.66, which is absolutely insane when you consider the fact that at one point in time it did jump up to that $652.25. That was about a year ago when it hit that one year high and really crashed on. The market in general kind of fell apart. A lot of people lost interest in Sword and Shield. A lot of people lost interest in Pokemon and were moving on to other things, moving into One Piece, moving into Lorcana. And now all of a sudden, a lot of attention is being paid on these Sword and Shield era sets, especially as some of these booster boxes start going out of stock on the Pokemon Center website, like Fusion Strike, like Chilling Rain uh, that we just talked about. Now that you have the back half of the Sword and Shield set, those trainer gallery sets, more attention is being paid to those. And Umbreon VMAX, for example, the chase card probably of the Sword and Shield era is really paying the dividend. Like, it's really starting to gain some ground. Uh, jumped up from $491.50 all the way up to almost $600 now and continuing to climb. Uh, it'll be very interesting to see where that settles. Uh, Charizard EX from Scarlet and Violet 151. This is like the picture of consistency. You can see it did jump up to about $135. That was about a month and a half or two months after the release of Scarlet and Violet 151. Uh, but it has been really flat ever since then. We're actually right around the lowest point this Charizard EX has been ever since release of Scarlet and Violet 151. And I did see some posts of people finding Costco deals, deals at Costco. So if you are a Costco member, it does seem like there's uh, like Zapdos EX boxes. They're bundle boxes uh, from basically $17 a piece. So it's like $30 
$34, you get two boxes, which is going to be about eight packs of Scarlet and Violet 151. So that does bring the pack price down considerably, uh, considering the fact that there has not been a full reprint announced as of yet for Scarlet and Violet 151. Even though for a while products were wet readily available under MSRP, it is getting a little bit more difficult to find, uh, finding them in stock at uh, big box stores or finding them in stock at LGSs at, at decent pricing uh, where it's about $5 or even less than that per booster pack. So uh, definitely a good deal at Costco if you have a Costco membership and if you have like, I just saw this yesterday. So very interesting information. Uh, so if that continues to happen where more and more products hit the shelves uh, and more and more supply gets put out there, people love opening Scarlet and Violet 151. That might put more of these special illustration rare Charizard EXs into the market, which will bring price down a little bit more. But right now, sitting at 110.33, which is just above its 109.83 uh, one year low or six months low because the set's only been out for six months. So it'll be a very interesting to see how this Charizard EX continues to perform, uh, but very consistent uh, ever since it's been released. Here's the Bubble Mew from Paldean Face. This one continues to drop further and further down. This one was sitting at 136.87 after the release. It came out, Paldean Face, a lot of attention got paid to that Bubble Mew. Again, not the easiest pull in the world, but not necessarily impossible to pull. Uh, and it really started collapsing right after that initial week as more and more product came out. Booster bundles played a huge role in really bringing a lot of these single prices down. Uh, you can see really around the 15th there, it continued to fall further and further and further. Now it's sitting at $73.63, which is a low point for this and continuing to drop, uh, especially with that Mew. That Mew EX has been printed so many different times in different variants. So there's a lot of different copies of it out there. Uh, so for a competitive, there's not really going to be a whole lot of competitive impact on the pricing uh, of that card. Here's the Lugia V from Silver Tempest. This one also doing uh, uh, not too great but a little bit better over the last couple of months you can see uh sitting at 187.04 in march of 2023 and it's really been just a downward spiral and i think part of that too is because all of these silver tempest silver tempest god packs started hitting the market right like originally uh you saw like pogarev and cool Train orion opening up these tins where every single silver tempest pack had a guaranteed hit and it looked like that only impacted uh certain distributors because not every tin had that impact so anybody who ordered from that distributor was able to find a hit and it really was a huge huge uh abundance of alternate arts kind of hitting the market and then you've seen uh like pokevault for example open up these sleeve boosters uh that have a guaranteed hit so a lot of silver tempest packs and i think at one point in time there was also these pokeballs uh the pokeball tins that had that guaranteed hit in silver tempest as well so uh, i think a lot more lugia v alternate arts kind of hit the market in that regard helping bring this price point way down and now you can see it's recovered a little bit uh but still sitting at 127.80 and part of that could be too uh, because people are paying more attention to the competitive side of things and Lugia is expected to perform really well in the competitive side in the upcoming several months especially as we get closer and closer to worlds and again I know not a lot of players are going to focus on alternate arts but it doesn't hurt to have one of an alternate art or different artworks in your deck so that way when you're searching through your deck you're searching through your 60 cards to determine what is prized it really helps those cards stand out a lot more so $127 for a one of of this alternate Lugia V is definitely not something that a lot of competitive players would pass up to help increase that consistency search and everything like that. So uh, doing okay over the last couple weeks. Again, it's gone up about 10% uh, since January 24th, but still way down from where it was. Uh, Iono really following the same pass path as what we saw uh, from Mew. It's leveled off a little bit over the last couple weeks, so not as bad as Mew, uh, but not performing as strong as what the Charizard EX, for example. It's been a very downward uh, tumble for Iono. <laughs> this one started out $94.75. It dropped down to $35.53 recently, and it's kind of hovering right around that point, $36.51. You might see it get down to about $30 or even sub $30. We do have that Iono Premium Collection box coming out at the end of the month. Uh, that's going to put more full art Ionos into the market that could impact, you know, this special illustration rare, the special illustration rare from Paldea and, or Paldea Evolved, the full art from Paldea Evolved. Lots of Ionos just really kind of impacting the market. Here's a very, very interesting card right here, Iron Hands EX. Part of the reason that this is performing extremely well is the unknown. The unknown of how it's going to perform in the competitive market. This is a card that is being very driven uh, by the competitive side of things, especially with Lugia getting a lot of tr gaining a lot of traction. Obviously, Lugia being weak uh, to uh, electric Pokemon. This is something that can be splashed into a lot of decks. Iron Hands EX performing extremely well. You can see this card dropped down to $6.16. 
pants at the end of January, beginning of February, which was well off of where it started at when Paradox Rift originally came out and it was hovering right around $17. Uh, like all, like a lot of singles, as soon as the set releases, this one crashed, like it fell apart and was relatively consistent, right? You can see from basically November of 2023 all the way up until January of 2024, that two and a half, three month stretch, it stayed right around $6. But now as rotation is coming, like rotation's only a few weeks away, we have a major, major event uh, at the beginning of April with the European International Championships. That's going to be the first event uh, with the new rotation, new format. You're going to have uh, Temporal Forces legal. Obviously, people are kind of trying to figure out what the format is going to look like. And Iron Hands is a card that a lot of people are kind of adding to their deck. And that's why you see this giant surge. So 1474 is kind of where it's sitting right now. So if you have duplicates, I don't usually make recommendations, but if you have extras of Iron Hands EX, now is really the time that you want to start kind of unloading them. Will it go up? I mean, it could go up, uh, but if it goes up to $17, $18, uh, are you really going to be upset if you miss out on that extra few dollars right there? If for some reason it doesn't perform well in the market or in the competitive side and then falls back down to about $6. So uh, definitely be a little bit more safer, in my opinion, and move off of your extra copies of Iron Hands EX while you still can. Giratina V, the alternate art, definitely doing extremely well over the past few months. This one was, uh, in my opinion, really impacted by the reprints of Lost Origin. Those reprints have kind of started to settle a little bit. Uh, you can't really buy too much Lost Origin anymore from distribution. Distribution held a lot back. They had a lot of boxes that were available right around market price. Now that those have kind of started to phase off a little bit, you see less and less Lost Origin hitting the market when it comes to booster boxes, and you see booster boxes settling right around MSRP as long as they're still available on the Pokemon Center website. Whereas a couple months ago, you could still find booster boxes of uh, Lost Origin for 125, 130. If you looked hard enough, you can see this one hit its one year low in December of 2023 or January of 2024. Right at the beginning there, it hit $232.16. It's been climbing quite a bit over the last couple months. It's jumped up over 10%, sitting at 269.65 currently and continuing to head in the upward direction. Roaring Moon EX, another card that's been doing really well in the format and has a lot of potential for the next format. Well off of where it was, this card did jump over $100 after Paradox Rift released, jumped up to $114.61. Uh, but you can see at the end of January, it did settle at $57.11. It's up about 5% from that point, sitting at $59.65 currently, uh, but relatively flat. The interesting thing is not a whole lot of copies available on TCG Player. So this could go either way in the market currently. You might see this jump up to about $70, or if it doesn't perform really well, you might see it drop below $50. It'll really depend on how things happen, how things move over the next month or so. Uh, here's the Venus Oreex Special Illustration Rare from Scarlet and Violet 151. Again, very consistent. Not a whole lot of difference between its one-year uh, low and one-year higher. Six-month low and six-month high. You're only looking at about 20% right there. It's sitting right in the middle at 4209. It's been up and down really since the release of Scarlet and Violet 151. A really beautiful looking card, uh, but a lot of demand for Scarlet and, Scarlet and Violet 151 singles. People continue to fill out master sets and things like that, which is why a lot of those singles continue to perform uh, extremely well. Here's the Iron Hands EX Special Illustration Rare, obviously with the regular art performing so well, and I told you, you know, people might want to keep multiple copies, multiple different artworks in their sets, so that way for searchability purposes, it's easy to kind of look things, look at things, and see, identify what's missing, what might be prized. Uh, Iron Hands EX, with the regular art approaching $16, $17, it's no wonder that this one jumped up as well, because for $5 more, you could have bought uh, an, an, a Special Illustration Rare Iron Hands EX. This one, well off of its... Uh, uh, six months higher right since Paradox Rift came out. It was sitting at $37.59. So it's about 20% below that, but still way above uh, its six month low when it was at $21.05. It's jumped almost 50% over the last couple months and continuing to trend in the upward direction. Here's the Magikarp from Paldea Evolve. This one has been absolutely nuts. You, didn't, you don't see, uh, obviously it had a little bit of a false spike there at the beginning in June, right after the set kind of released. It jumped all the way up to $80. You can see it at $78.08 as its one year high, but then it dropped back down to that one year low of $44.28. And I don't know where this card ends. There's a lot of illustration rares in Paldea Evolved, which makes Magikarp a little bit more difficult of a pull. You're going to have to open up a lot more Paldea Evolved packs. And with the age of Paldea Evolved continuing to pass by, uh, we're, we're at a point where we're closing in on that one year anniversary of Paldea Evolved. This card has been extremely consistent over that year, like just continuing growth over and over and over again, sitting at $7.04 every once in a while. I think, okay, well, this card is going to slow down. It's just going to level off and it continues to climb. And it's not like 
fast climb. It's not like this transcendence. Uh, it's just slowly climbing. Very, very strong organic growth, it seems. Sitting at $70.04. Uh, the Giratina V-Star from Crown Zenith. This, card, this card's actually been doing pretty well over the last couple months. Uh, up to $79.54, which is quite above its $67.31 uh, one-year low in November. It hit that one-year low. It's about 20% above that. You can see still way off of its one-year high of $118.21, but a lot of interest in this card. And the gold cards in general from Crown Zenith, I think are going to be very collectible for a long time. The difference is Crown Zenith was printed to absolute oblivion. Uh, and there were new releases of that product that came out every single month, sometimes multiple releases. Uh, so it seemed like 2023 was the year of Crown Zenith, where it seemed like every other week there was another Crown Zenith release that was coming out, which really impacted prices, brought booster pack prices for Crown Zenith uh, just above $3, kind of around that $3.30 mark, $3.40 mark, where you could buy them for basically wholesale. A lot of people ripping Crown Zenith because it's such a fun set to open. So there's a lot of Giratina V-Stars probably that are out there. But again, performing extremely well over the past few months. Here's the Charizard EX Special Illustration Rare from Obsidian Flames. There's so many Charizard EXs out there. This card, really not a whole lot different uh, than what we've seen from the other Charizard EXs out there. Even the ones that are, you know, the Terra Hat ones and things like that, the full arts, uh, just because of its background. It's a cool looking card, uh, but really performing absolutely terribly. When you look at, compare it to other Charizards in the past, I mean, this one has seen a decline that, I mean, way worse than what we saw from even the Char Charizard. Charizard VMAX uh, from Darkness Ablaze. This card just not performing well at all. Uh, $71.85 is where it was in September, about a month after the release of the set. Now it's sitting at a six-month low of $45.89 and continuing to fall further and further. Definitely a card that you want to keep an eye on, but it, with six only six illustration or special illustration rares in Obsidian Flames, the pull rates on this are very, very high. Uh, you look like you're going to get about one per every case that you open up, which is probably keeping that price down. Obsidian Flames just doesn't have have a whole lot of ultra rares in it, which makes pull rates a lot easier. Here's the alternate Charizard V from Brilliant Stars, also doing fairly well over the past several months since November. Uh, it's risen up a little bit over 10%, right around 15%. It hit that one-year low of 103.30. Looked like it was going to fall below $100, uh, but now continuing to sell extremely well. Definitely a popular card and will be a popular card for quite some time, sitting at 118.48. Currently still well off of its one-year high of 165.91, but definitely trending uh, in the right direction. So that's the top. 15 selling cards right now, modern ultra rares uh, when it comes to Pokemon. You can look at further lists uh, or for further detail of other cards if you want. Like now that uh, you know how to do it, and you, you probably already <laughs> knew how to do it. I didn't give you any brain, uh, like huge information or anything like that, but I hope you did enjoy the content. And if you did, uh, if you could do me a favor, hit that subscribe button down below, leave a like, leave a comment. It goes a really long way for the algorithm. I know people say that all the time, but honestly, it does a ton uh, to kind of get the channel out there. So every time you leave a comment, even if it's just to say hi, like it goes a very, very long way. So thank you so much for that. You guys are absolutely amazing. We'll be back tomorrow with a short uh, of opening uh, some temporal forces. I think we'll open up uh, a couple three pack blisters in the short. We'll see how it goes. But thank you guys so much for everything. I'll talk to you again tomorrow. Till next time. Peace.